Assalamualaikum uh, from uh, students uh, i am professor askar or uh, once again aaj ka hamara to topic hoga uh, we start with a new lecture about wounds scar healings uh, scars aur wounds ki healing kis tarah hoti hai how do they heal tissue repair kis tarah hoti hai aur how the scars are formed with mukhtalif parts so let's start with our uh, powerpoint presentation Here we are. So, what is a wound actually? A wound is a circumscribed injury which is caused by external force, and it can involve any tissue and organ. This, these are the superficial wounds you are seeing. They are deep wounds also, liver laceration or splenic wound or spleen laceration, and things like that. A wound is a break in integrity of the skin or the tissues. often which may be associated with disruption of the structure and function uh, as a result of the wound the patient may not the structure may not function as it was before the wound or there is a loss of function a cut or break in continuity of any tissue caused by injury or operation so what is the classification of wounds frank and wakefield classification classify wound mainly in tidy wound they are clean wound and untidy unclean wounds there are only two classification class classification may be based on the type of wound it may be a clean incised wound as such as a surgical incision been made then may be a lacerated wound a knife wound or a laceration uh, any crushing uh, crushing involved in that then there may be bruising and contusion they are superficial wounds there may be a hematoma subcutaneous hematoma formation there is a puncture wound due to pointed uh, ele elements that's a knife or pins things like that there may be abrasion superficial removal of the skin crush injury in which uh, deep tissue are crushed like muscles road traffic accident the wheel of the car going over the legs foot then there are injuries to the bone these are complicated wounds and joints may be open or close injury to the nerve either clean cut or crush injury injury to arteries and veins and they are penetrating high velocity wounds such as gunshot wound knife wounds missile wounds then there is a classification based on thickness of the wound superficial wounds are normally uh, involve the superficial layer of the epidermis this is this is the uh, diagram of uh, epidermis and dermis you can see the superficial epidermis basement membrane and this is a deep epidermis this is the basement membrane and this is the dermis and these are the subdermal tissues so superficial wound only involves the superficial layer of the epidermis partial thickness this it is also a superficial wound involving the superficial layer and a bit of the deeper layer of the epidermis then full thickness that goes down to the basement membrane full epidermis is involved then there are deep wounds going to the epidermis complicated wounds in which nerves and vessels are swayed then there are penetrating wounds they are very small in their appearance but they go deep into the body so they are long distance wounds you know, they are have a long pathway classification of wounds surgical wounds are uh, clean wound clean contaminated wound clean wounds are uh, 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 incision made by the surgeon as uh, incision made for inguinal hernia repair for umbilical hernia repair clean contaminated wounds are which get contamination after surgery such as surgery for appendectomy they are clean contaminated wounds or and 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 gall bladder things like that then there are complicated wounds contaminated wounds contaminated wounds as surgery uh, around the perianal region ischioretical fossa injuries or injuries around uh, those area that has that no normally have uh, a normal bacterial count such as oral uh, cavity things like that. then they are dirty infected wound dirty infected wound are the drain abscesses uh, superficial synergistic gangrene of the skin corneal gangrene synergistic gangrene 
of uh, abdominal war these are very dirty infected bone or road traffic accident where there is a lot of foreign material dust and debris into the bone so according to the duration of the wound healing how does this process of acute uh, wound healing occurs acute wounds acute wounds are wounds that usually heal in the anticipated time frame and what is that time frame duration of the wound immediately immediately to the few weeks normally we once we put the stitches we remove the stitches on the 10th to 14th day of post operative day so these are acute wounds example a wound acquired as a result of the result of trauma or an operative procedure then there are chronic wounds wounds that fail to heal in in the anticipated time frame and often recur the duration of wound is more than 4 weeks to 3 months they are chronic wounds wound occur as a result of an underlying condition such as extended pressure on the tissue poor circulation or even poor nutrition pressure ulcer leg ulcer and diabetic foot are example of such chronic wounds healing healing is the body response to injury in an attempt to restore normal structure and functions the process of healing involves two distinct distinct processes first is regeneration and the second end repair and what is regeneration this uh, re regeneration is when healing take place by proliferation of parenchymal cells and usually result in complete res restoration of the original tissue the goal of all surgical procedures should be regeneration which returns the tissue to their normal microstructure and function and what is repair it is the healing outcome in which tissue do not return to the normal architecture architecture and function repair typically result in the formation of scar tissue and scar tissue as you know is more of uh, formed by fibrous fibroblast and this fib all fibrous tissue and it's not uh, the normal tissue of the uh, of the area where the bone occurs type of bone healing healing by primary intention primary closure healing by secondary intention secondary closure healing by tertiary intention delayed primary closure uh, what does the healing by first intention of involves wounds with opposed edges there those are the edges which are stitched by uh, 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 proline scale or by steel strips healing of wound with foreign characteristics clean and these are clean and uninfected wound surgically incised wound without much loss of cell and tissue edge of the wound are approximated by surgical sutures wounds with opposed edge the edge are uh, meeting each other in the midline and there is a primary union and how does healing occurs in these cases then seen causes death of limited number of epithelial cell and connective tissue cells disruption of epithelial base, base basal membrane continuity the narrow incision space immediately fills with clotted blood containing fibrin and blood cells dehydration of the surface clot forms the well known scab that covers the bone there is a uh, dry scab over the uh, incision line that uh, that result as a result of dehydration of the surface clot within 24 hours neutrophil appears at the margin of opening and moving towards fibrin clot epidermis at its cut edges taken as a result of mitotic activity of basal cells you can see the scab formation neutrophils are coming there is a clot in the center within 24 to 48 hours spurs of epithelial cells from both edges migrate and grow along the cut margin of the dermis depositing a uh, basal membrane component as they move they fuse in the midline beneath the surface of the scab thus producing a continuous but thin epithelial layer there is a thin epithelial layer here and all these tissues move ahead including the ba basal membrane forming the union of the wound during the second week continued accumulation of collagen and proliferation of fibroblast there is a leukocyte infiltration edema and increased vascularity have largely disappeared by this time neutrophils have gone fibro fibrous union has started these are the fibroblast cells they have aligned themselves there is not much of edema left 
and much of the new uh, vascularization is gone. So, by the by the end of first month, scar comprising. Uh, scar comprises a cellular connective tissue devoid of inflammatory infiltrate covered now by intact epidermis. Dermal appendages that have been destroyed in the line of vaccine are permanently lost. So it doesn't matter, there are so many of appendages that are simple line uh, loss doesn't matter for the body. Then side strength of the wound increases thereafter, but it may take months for the wound area to obtain its maximum strength. Healing by secondary intention, wound with separated edges, secondary union, when there is more extensive loss of cells and tissues. You can see these wounds, these are by healing by secondary intention, large gap between the skin margins, this is large clot formations, fibroblasts, neutrophils, neovascularization based upon memories is restored, there is a large gap over here, there is a large scar actually. And this is an all scar area. There is a wound contraction, the wound becomes near both the edges and they are, uh, they are connected with a fibrous tissue. Regeneration of parenchymal cells cannot completely reconstitute the original architect. The original architect is lost in this case. Abundant granulation tissue grow in from the margin to complete the repair. This is the granulation tissue growing from the margins. Secondary healing differ from primary healing in several respects. There is a lot of inflammatory reaction. Much larger amount of granulation tissues are formed. Wound contraction occur in large surface wound. Substantial scar formation and thinning of the epidermis occur. So the, you get a permanent scar or an ugly scar. So, difference between first degree and second degree union of wound. In cleanliness, the primary intention healing wounds are clean, where wounds that heal by secondary intention are not clean. In infection, the primary doesn't are not much impacted, whereas secondary are infected. Margins are surgically clean in the primary wounds, in secondary wound they are irregular. Sutures are used in the primary wound. And where in secondary healing, there is no healing. healing by small granulation tissue, and in, thin, and in the secondary wound, there is a large granulation tissue formation. Outcome primary wounds give a linear scar, whereas secondary wound gives you an irregular wound. Complications are not frequent in primary wounds, but they are quite frequent in the secondary. Healing by the tertiary intention, delayed primary closure. Wound that are heavily contaminated and are likely to develop an infection, a closed primarily may be left open for three to five days with frequent surgical dressings. This allows the wound to be cleaned and allow the body natural defense to decrease bacterial count. The wound can then be closed and allowed to heal, producing a wound with characteristic similar to primary closure. We put the stitches again and they uh, heal as they were primary incisions. So stages of wound healing are stage of inflammation, a lot of neutrophils migrating into the wound, stage of granulation tissue formation and organization, a lot of new pouting, new vascularization, fibroblasts coming in, stage of epithelialization, both the edges meeting in the center, then there is then there is a stage of scar formation and reabsorption, reabsorption of uh, new uh, new blood vessel. Uh, macrophages, neutrophils, then there is a stage of mat maturation in which the scar tissue or the fibroblast realign themselves and gain their tensile strength in the passage of time and become mature tissue. So phases of wound healing are for soft tissue wound healing inflammatory phase it can be broken down into further there is a clot formation, early inflammation and late inflammation. Then there are proliferated proliferated poly Predictive uh, phase in which there are new growth of new blood vessels, and then there is a maturation phase that is, maturity in the scar tissue occurs. Uh, this is most uh, most of the fibrous tissue maturation where the uh, normal strength comes to the wound, uh, uh, to the wound over passage of time. 
then there are some factors influencing uh, affecting the wound healing they are local factors are infection present of necrotic necrotic tissue and foreign body poor breast supply of the wound venous or lymphatic stasis tissue tension hematoma large defects or poor acquisition Uh, this slide shows the factor influence healing of a wound site. The site of wound is very important. Some wound sites are such as face, neck, where the wound heals very beautifully and very quickly. Normally, we remove the st uh, stitches on face on the fifth post of the structure is involved. If deeper structures are involved, bones, nerves, then they are complicated wounds. Mechanism of wounding: high uh, st uh, velocity wounds such as gunshot wounds. Knife wounds, missile injuries, they are difficult to heal. Then incisions, crush injuries, crush avulsions, then contamination, loss of tissue, result in delay healing, other local factors such as vascular insufficiency, whether it is arterial or venous. Previous radiation pressure, systemic factors are some like as diabetes, uremia, steroids, immune deficiency. Then other factors are recurrent trauma. If the trauma is happening again and again, such as in uh, venous ulcer, uh, ulcer over the shin, legs, foot, then the area which are irradi irradiated by X-rays, they are weak radiation effect. The normal healing process, site of wound, wound over joint and back are poor healing places. Underlying disease such as osteomyelitis and malignancy doesn't allow the superficial wound to heal properly. Then there are general factors, age, obesity, smoking, malnutrition, zinc, copper, vitamin deficiency, anemia, malignancy, jaundice, diabetes, HIV, steroid and cytotoxic drugs. What can be the complication of wound healing? Number one is deessence, it's a disruption of the wound. Evisceration. For example, an in incisional hernia uh, forming in the abdominal wound after abdominal surgery that has uh, deascended and has been sutured again. So later on, evisceration or incisional hernia or at the time of deascens, when there is a disruption of the wound, the abdominal contents come out. This is known as evisceration. Then there may be hemorrhage in the wound, adhesion formations, Infection, herniations, fistula formation, sinus formation, suture complications, stitch abscesses, hypertrophic scar, keloids, and malignant changes. Malignant changes occurring in a chronic wound is known as marginal nerve ulcer, a squamous cell carcinoma development. Principle of management of acute wound is cleansing, cleaning the wound, exploration and diagnosis, exploring the wound. So that we can come across which structures involve blood vessels or nerves or bones, things like debridement of foreign materials, dead tissue to be removed, repair of the structures such as blood vessels, nerves, replacement of the lost tissue where indicated, skin cover if required, partial skin graft, full thickness skin graft, flaps, things like that. There is a lot of loss of local tissue. Skin closure without tension. This is the primary aim of wound closure. If there is tension, there is poor wound healing, poor blood supply, poor uh, disruption of the wound later on with deacens. All of, of the above with careful tissue handling and meticulous techniques. Yes. Then there is specific healing, healing in different tissue. Bones heal, heal by osteoblast cells. Uh, initially, there is formation of hematoma. Then the osteoblast cells coming, migrating in a callus formation occur for then this scalus formation is converted into bone then there is a bone remold, remolding which takes about one to two years nerves you have already uh, gone through the valerian degeneration where is the where the, wherever there is a cut in the uh, nerve uh, it degenerates uh, distally wholly and proximally to the, uh, to the first uh, cell and then there, there's a regeneration of the tissue occurs. Then there are tendon uh, uh, injuries which are replaced by fibroblast and maturation of fibrous tissue. Some specific wounds are bites, 
animal bites, human bites, then they puncture wound, which are very small on on the top, but they are very deep inside. Then they are local hematoma formation subcutaneous. Degloving injury. Degloving injuries are that their proximal uh, connection is lost, where they are distally attached. Compartmental syndrome. In this injury, there is a, a lot of uh, tension in uh, in some, some muscle compartment, as in calf. As you can see in leg, anterior med medial compartment, anterolateral compartment, posterior compartment, close compartment injury, in which there is a tension, edema, hematoma formation that compresses the blood vessels and uh, result in distal ischemia. High pressure in injection injuries, chronic wounds such as leg ulcer and pressure sores. Then there are necrotizing soft tissue infection. In necrotizing soft tissue infection, there is a lot of edema beyond the area of erythema. There is a lot of capitis. Then there is skin blistering, fever, often absent, grayish discharge, pink or in skin staining, focal gangrene, late sign. Or finally, there is shock, coagulopathy, multi organ failure. This is a synergistic gangrene of the leg, thigh. You can see the gangrene skin, a lot of edema. Necrosis. So, once the wound has healed, there is a scar formation. And what is a scar? Scar is an area of fibrous tissue that replaces normal skin after an injury. Scar results from the biological process of wound healing in the skin as well as in other organ and tissue of the body. Scarring. The process of scar formation is also known as scarring. What is the composition, composition of the scar? Scar tissue is comprised composed of the same protein collagen as the tissue that is replaced, that it replaces. But the fiber composition of the protein is different. So same collagen coming but different composition. Instead of random formation of collagen fibers found in normal tissue, in fibrosis the collagen cross links and forms a pronounced alignment in a single direction. So they are weak initially. Scar uh, classification may be mature scar, immature scar, linear hypertrophic scar, widespread hypertrophic scar, minor keloid, major keloid contractures, superficial macular scars, eye speck scar, rolling scar, and box scar. scar. What is a mature scar? Light colored flat scar. Uh, it's a normal skin incision. We are closed by surgically with switching. Immature scar, it's a red, sometimes itchy or painful and slightly elevated scar in the process of remolding. Many of these will mature normally over time and become flat. Then there are linear hypertrophic scar or the surgical or traumatic scar. They are red, raised, sometimes itchy scar, confined to border of the original surgical incision of pain within weeks following surgery and can regress of its own. Then there is a white spread hypertrophic scar or burn scar if I spread there is a widespread ray, red rays sometimes which is scar that means within the border of the burn injury then there are minor keloid focally raised itchy scar extending over the normal tissue and may develop up to one year after the injury they continues to grow even after the six months this is the minimum time for keloid formation and does not regress on its own major keloid large raised are possibly painful, pleuritic, extending over normal tissues, often resulting from minor trauma and can continue to spread over years. Contractures. Restrict movement due to skin and underlying tissue that pull together during healing and can only when there is a large amount of tissue loss or where a wound crosses a joint. So, hypertrophic scar developed soon after surgery usually improve with time remains within the confine of the wound. The difference between the hypertrophic scar and the keloids occur when scar cross joints or skin trees at a right angle improve with appropriate surgery, frequent incidents have no association, association with skin color. Whereas keloid may develop once after the trauma, really improve with time, they continue to grow spread outside the border of the initial lesion. This is very important. They grow over the passage of time and become large and large. And at times become very large. Occur predominantly on predominant areas are air lobule, shoulders, sternum notch, really across the 
are often worsened by surgery. There is a uh, high incidence of recurrence of keloid even after surgery, surgical movement. Rare incidence but associated, associated with dark skin color. This is a hypertrophic scar and this is a keloid. Continuous growing, overgrowing the wound area. Red, itchy. The patient has a uh, familiar tendency for scar uh, at keloid formation. How do you prevent such keloid formation? Avoid injury or incision in the keloid prone per, per person. There is a history, some people are more prone to keloid formation, so we avoid making uh, untidy incisions or incision against the uh, skin crease area on the instant angles line. Avoid incision in keloid prone areas such as sternum, ear lobules, incision along relaxed skin tension lines that uh, reduce the incidence of keloid formation. Meticulous surgical techniques. Gentle. Good wound care, rapid healing. And what will be the surgical treatment of chiller? Surgical excision plus post surgical radiotherapy in recourse. So, frequently recurrent keloids. Tension reduction or shielding method Z plasty or W plasty, PY plasty, local flaps to cover the wound. Serial excision for tissue expansion. Whereas non surgical. Methods include silicon sheeting and gel, pressure garments, steroid injection, topical application of steroid and snake oil. This is a contracture of wound across the neck, post-burn contractures, I think, in the neck area. With this, we end this uh, topic of wound healing, scar formations. If you have any query, you can email me on this uh, email address. So I thank you all for us. A patient listening with me. Thank you.